Good morning, everybody. Clay on the Trail here. And I wanted to talk a little bit about stoves today. I made a video a while back and I said I don't do gear reviews because I don't have that much gear. And it was one of those things as soon as I said it, it dawned on me. I've been backpacking and camping since the very early 80s. And I've acquired quite a bit of gear over the years. I just don't use most of it anymore, so I didn't really assume I have any, but I started thinking about all the stoves that I've used over the years, and I thought I'd share some of them with you. Why I like some of them, why I don't use some of them anymore, and why I'm using what I'm using right now. So let's check them out, because I've got way more of them than I thought I did. Okay, so one of the first kind of stoves I ever camped with is like an old Coleman two burner propane stove. And these use the pound bottles of propane. And these are great stoves, two burner, cooking for a big group. Uh, they light real easy. They work when it's cold, but this thing is ridiculously heavy. My scale um, maxed out. I can't even tell you how much they are. But when I first started backpacking, I used a stove that sat on top of one of these canisters. You know, I was young, stupid, and could carry heavy loads all day long and, and just didn't think anything of it. I have, in the last 10 years, used a stove like this. When I'm packing with a horse or goats, and you can check out my goat video where I get my goats from how you want to pack goats because they're awesome if you're not in a hurry and have a set pace you can carry stuff like this that's why you take an animal when you're packing my dog packs a lot of stuff for me but this is too big okay so I know some of you guys are saying I thought this was going to be a backpacking video well we're going to get there but I pack in a lot of different ways so when I'm using a great big two burner stove like that, I have cook kits with gigantic pots. I mean, you can boil a gallon of water in this. Um, works really, really great on the big heavy stoves. But again, I would only take something like this if I am using some sort of pack animal. Otherwise, they are just too huge. Uh, the first time I did the Highline Trail... We had goats, and I packed a propane, a two-burner propane stove, and some of my big pots. The second time I did the High Line Trail, I didn't have pack animals, but I had my wife and my three kids with me, so there was a total of five people. So we ended up not taking the biggest pot, but taking some of the smaller ones, which again are ridiculous in weight. But for feeding five people, and I believe my daughter was about eight, my youngest daughter was about eight years old when we did it. And that's 86 miles for those of you that aren't familiar with the Highline Trail in the UNS. Um, but we ate good. And that's important to keep everybody happy and everybody going. Okay, so part of my cook kit are, uh, for big trips like that, I have all sorts of folding utensils, spatulas, strainers we did a lot of pastas and stuff and stupid things like that just make sense um got to have can or handles to hold on to the pots i have different handles for the different pots that one didn't work to pick them up and take them off the stove so needless to say i would go through this kit and take just the pots um, that i would need and the thing with these pots, the lids for them are also frying pans. Uh, these nests, I, this whole kit, again, maxed my scale out, so I can't even tell you how heavy it is, but it is ridiculous. So if you're not packing with an animal and not feeding a large group of people, this is silly. But I have had circumstances where this is genius and it works great. Okay, this is another... I guess could possibly be considered a ridiculous piece of gear, but I actually carry this quite a bit. Uh, in the Uinas, where I camp, you can catch fish all day long. So I plan on 
fish for meals. I guess if I don't catch fish, I go hungry. But I carry things like the dehydrated hash browns and trying to cook dehydrated hash browns in some of the small pot kits that they sell nowadays, it just doesn't work. And this is a frying pan. Somebody gave it to me. I don't even know where I got it. It doesn't have a name on it. This thing is ridiculously light. And I can cook fish and hash browns for two people. And this thing just slides down in my pack. And this stupid fry pan. Yeah, well, it maxed my scale out too. So sometimes it just depends on the trip, where I'm going, whether I would bring something like this or not. Now, I know how to cook fish on coals, so I can leave this home, but if I'm bringing something like the hash browns or you want to make pancakes or something a little, a little above and beyond, there's nothing like having a lightweight frying pan. And even though it maxed my scale out, my scale doesn't go up that high. It only goes up to 200 grams. Um... So this isn't completely ridiculous of a thing to carry. So the second time I did the Highline Trail with my wife and my kids, we carried the MSR Dragonfly, and we actually carried two of them. Um, we did planned a 10-day trip and did it in nine with a rest day in the middle of it. So I carried two stoves. Well, if one breaks down, Got to have something to cook with. And we were cooking for five and doing a lot of pasta dishes. And uh, we buy the muffin mixes and, and make desserts and things like that. I, my kids were very little, like 8, 10, and 12 years old. An MSR Dragonfly runs about $140. And there are lighter MSR stoves that use liquid fuel. But this one I love. It has an adjustment on it. You can simmer food, you can torch it and just cook the crap out of it. It's very adjustable and you can actually cook on this stove just like you would at home. Now they do require white gas or similar fuel. This stove will run off of unleaded fuel, jet fuel, diesel, kerosene, uh, and white gas. And you have to carry the fuel with you and you have to figure out what they, um, how much you're gonna need. They also require a pump, so the pump goes down in the bottle, and you have to pump up and pressurize your fuel tank. And you have to carry all sorts of stuff. This has a windscreen, a burner to keep the cold off the ground coming to it, but this is a great stove, and I use this stove when I do mountaineering trips, and temperatures are gonna be ridiculously cold, because some of the alcohol just doesn't work at all, and the uh, canister stoves, which we're going to get to, work okay, but you can run a big canister dry trying to boil water when it's absolutely freezing out. So this is, even though it's heavier, um, a great stove kit. Okay, so I have three bottles to carry fuel for this stove, which is kind of a bulky stove, but under the right circumstances, where other stoves won't work, this one always will. So these uh, bottles come in 11, 22, and 33 ounce bottles for fuel. And I believe on the Highline Trail, I carried the large one and the small one, and we ended up having tons, tons of fuel left over. So you can save yourself a lot of weight with these by figuring out how much it's going to, uh, how much fuel you're going to need and only carrying so much, plus always bring in a little bit spare. Um, when I do my mountaineering trips, though, and I'm melting snow for water, this is the stove, and I will actually carry one of my larger pots, not my biggest, but one of the larger pots, because you will spend hours and hours melting snow, and the little, pro or the little uh, butane canisters, they just can't keep up with a stove like this. So even up into the beginning of 2018, I hadn't got into any really lightweight stoves yet. They're very expensive, and... I just didn't see the need for it till I got one. But early last spring, this was one of my go-to kits. And this is just an MSR Alpine pot. It's stainless steel. I'm still maxing my scale out. I can't give you weights on any of these things. I did drill some holes in the lid of this so I could drain pasta. 
But my go-to stove, I got into wood-burning stoves. I think they're cool. So this is a knockoff of a solo pot, a Chinese knockoff. They're about $20. You fill it up with sticks. It's a double-walled stove, so it superheats the air in between the two pieces of metal, draws air in through the bottom, and then injects it in these holes around the top. And you'll actually get little, like, stove flames coming all the way around this, and these do not smoke. They're pretty cool. And where I camp, wood fires are allowed, and fuel is everywhere. So this is all you have to carry. It's uh, big enough to boil a big pot of water. And I've burned several pots of hash browns and fish, because one thing with this pot, it's either on, and it's cooking away, or it's off. So this pot breaks down. All right, I gotta remember how to do it. But it breaks down in a pretty small package, and then fits right inside this pot. The lid closes. And that's all you have to carry. So it breaks down pretty small, but again, maxing my scale out pretty heavy. So I went through a phase where I really, really was into wood burning stoves. And this is one that I picked up off Amazon. Um, they're $15. And they're basically just stainless steel pieces. The fold together and make a pot, make a stove. Okay, so here's what the stove looks like put together. And it's kind of a puzzle piece to put together. But you simply just put sticks in here, light them on fire. And this is kind of a, something I still carry once again, like uh, horse packing or goat packing, something like that. If you wanna have a little fire just for ambiance, but you don't need to, you know, chop down all sorts of trees and stuff to get things going. This is kind of a, a cool little stove to keep your fire smaller, more condensed, easier to, easier to feed. And, and you don't have to use a ton of fuel. This thing will burn off bark and pine cones and just little teeny sticks you pick up off the ground. So not something I use very often, but once in a while, it's it's good. If I go into a place I know there's not a ton of firewood, this is a great stove to still take and be able to have a little fire still. All right, for me, the next logical step in wood-burning stoves was a BioLite. And I used this stove a ton last spring into summer. And I love this stove. It's awesome. It doesn't matter where I go, there's fuel for it. This thing, again, burns little sticks and twigs and uh, dried grass and pine cones and stuff you can just pick up off the ground. It does have its flaws. For one, the thing is about $130 just to buy the stove, $260 to buy it in a bundle, and this one came with some funky uh, like grill thing that comes off of it with some legs and it... It's just uh, some stuff I would never use. And I got it when it was super on sale, but it was still very expensive. And the other issue with it is it's 3.2 pounds to carry it. Now, if you're not familiar with BioLite stoves, check them out. They're heavy. But this is a battery bank, and you can use this to charge your electronics. It also has a fan that forces air into the burn chamber, which is down here. This little rod right here heats up and creates electricity that charges the battery. So you could be out for months, 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 months on the trail and keep all your electronics charged and have awesome amounts of fuel if you're in a wooded area. Great, great stove. They can be a little fickle. If you don't put the wood in the burn chamber right, you have to take it off and fill it again which causes your water to stop 
you know, to cool off. And it's a, it's a, sometimes a really slow and frustrating process. And if it's super rainy, you've got to carry tools with you. I always carry a Mora knife and a Sierra saw because you've got to cut branches. And then I use a baton and use my knife to split the branches and stack the wood um, vertical so the they burn up through it. It works really, really well once you figure it out, but you've got to have dry wood, even if you've got to split wood to get to the center of it. And this thing is ridiculously heavy. There is a reason I changed and I haven't really looked back to this stove since. If you're using a pack animal and want to go lighter weight than, you know, <laughs> propane cylinders and big gigantic stoves, this is still a great way to go. Again, Mr. Zimmerman with uh, High Uena Pack Goats sends these out with people, and this is what they use exclusively. They also do all mountain house meals, so all you're doing is boiling water, which this thing is awesome for pour spout and the whole works just a little heavy for my tastes now but one year ago this was my go-to stove so in my past i went through a alcohol stove phase which i think are really neat i first i mean it's been a couple years ago on social media heard about penny stoves and it was something that i really really thought was cool taking a Pop bottle, there's a million videos out there. You guys know what they are. Super lightweight. And I made this entire cook kit, including, they call a Heine pot, which is a Heineken keg. Um, I don't drink beer, so I dumped the beer out, made my friend cry when I did it, ground this down, made a great pot out of it. This is a great cook kit. For some circumstances and I've done a lot of work on this I put some wick around the bottom of it you can soak this in alcohol to get it lighted to heat it up enough to where it will ignite all the burners across the top of it I dent it in like a heat exchanger around one of the rings of the the pot um, I have made muffins in this Heine pot with boiling water using produce bags from the grocery store and I put this as a spacer and a little screen on top so it doesn't get on the bottom and scorch and you just drop dough in the bag and put it down inside there and it will actually boil the water around will actually bake muffins and stuff it's awesome great trail treat and this whole kit I think we can finally get on the scale so something I did is I got some Ziploc storage containers I cut the lids the center or the tops of the lids off tape them together and this gives me two food containers to, to eat out of plus it stores my pot and my stove with my cage and all of my stuff now I put a zerk fitting on this stove and got some silicone hose and you can use the flip up top on these into the hose and actually add fuel while you're cooking. Not necessary, but I was never ever good at judging how much alcohol to use. I can test this thing in my, in my house all day long and I'm at about 7,300 feet of elevation. So these are not as effective at elevation and very, very much affected by air temperature outside. So here in my garage where there's no wind and it's 65 degrees with the heater on, uh, I can figure out how much fuel. And as soon as I take it outside and the wind starts blowing and I go up 3,000 feet in elevation to cook something, my uh, amount of fuel is no longer correct. And it caused me a lot of problems. So I actually learned to hate this cook system. And maybe if I were at warmer temperatures, closer to sea level, this would be the, the thing to have. So there's the whole thing in its container with all the parts coming in at 6.31 ounces. So we're finally on the scale.
So one of the things I started experimenting with, with the Heine pot, that I've never ever used, but I thought it was cool at the time, I took a, I don't even know, 24 ounce can, drilled some holes in the bottom of it, and you have to use the special can openers that allow you to pull the lids and put them back on. But you can fill this thing up full of vegetables. It fits perfectly inside the Heine pot, and you can steam vegetables and do all sorts of cool stuff that way. Never used it. Okay, so the next logical step for me in alcohol burners was to get a manufactured one, and I know there's a ton of them out there. I really got into uh, Mini Bull Designs, watching his videos and stuff, and it really got me interested in this, but I don't have a machine shop set up. I can weld, and I do a lot of woodworking and stuff like that, but I don't have the uh, machining capabilities. So I purchased, this is a Trianga Spirit Burner. You can get them off Amazon, $16, $20, somewhere in that area. Um, fill it up full of alcohol. It has the, the flame comes out around the lip. You can set your pot right on it and the flames will come out around it. These come with a adjustable flame thing. Or you can shut the flame off put the lid on it, and you can actually store your fuel in it. Made out of brass. They're actually pretty um, sturdy. I did read a lot about these, and they have a tendency to leak around this bottom edge, so I actually heated this up and soldered mine. I've never had an issue with it, but I just cannot get alcohol stoves to work at the elevation and temperatures that I camp at. So $16 or not, it's money I kind of wish I had never spent. And that stove comes in at 3.94 ounces, so it's heavier than my whole other alcohol kit put together with the pot and the storage containers. But 3.9 ounces for a full cook kit is nothing. 3.9 ounces for just a stove, really not bad. So last year, last summer, I broke down and started buying titanium stuff. I have reduced the weight in my pack in more than half. Not all from titanium, but it's one of those things, it's so expensive. It took me a long time to bite the bullet and actually buy something, but once I did, man, I don't know if it's uh, infectious or what, but I have the bug and I have a ton of titanium gear now. Okay, so changing to titanium. What this did is allowed me to go from ounces to grams on my scale. And I'm not a gram weenie. I, I mean, I take all sorts of luxury stuff with me. I still carry a fry pan that maxes my scale out. Well, I like to eat. I like to eat good food. Okay, the pot I ended up going with is the Snow Peak, and it's actually a 900 milliliter pot with the detachable lid that's a small fry pan. Never fried anything in it, but I do cook that way. It may, it may see an egg or a pancake in it before too long. Um, most people say, man, when you're doing uh, dehydrated meals and stuff, the most you need is, you know, cup and a half, two cups of water at the most. Well, I like hot chocolate or hot apple cider when I'm eating. Uh, I also have this 450 Snow Peak Titanium mug, so I can cook or boil up enough water to make my meal and a hot beverage at the same time. And let's check this out. 154.9 grams on the pot and fry pan. Sixty seven grams on the mug. Uh, let's see here. I just reached recently purchased this. I've never used it. Uh, when I'm doing freezer bag cooking, I bought a long handled spoon. That is like 20 grams. And this is one of my favorite purchases I've made. Oh, and it just fell apart. I like cooking my fish my trout 
over the coals on a fire. I don't generally use a frying pan unless I'm doing hash browns with it. And I was burning the crap out of myself. So I got a titanium fork and spoon with this cool little band. These are tokes and made a set of tongs and I have not burned my finger since. And even with the stupid plastic band on them, 19.6, 19.7, oh, it's jumping all over, grams. Regardless, grams, folks, grams. And I also got sucked in and I bought a titanium windscreen, which you cannot use on one of my stoves, but it comes in super handy on another one. And a titanium windscreen, I mean, comes in at 13.8 grams. So I started using canister stoves. This was a big jump when I went to all this titanium gear. I actually broke down and bought a Snow Peak Light Max. It was $60, and it hurt when I bought it. This is the first titanium thing I bought. But this thing, even at 9, 10,000 feet in elevation, I am boiling two cups of water in the two to three minute range with this stupid little stove. And it folds out. I do only use the all-season fuel blend. It is just cold in the UNS. I don't care even on a, you know, sunny all day long. It might be 80 degrees in the day if it hits that high, but it'll get down 40, 50 degrees at night. So I really like the all-season fuel blend. It just works way better where I'm at. Some people can get away with, with uh, other options. great great stove until it gets cold so for my summer fall backpacking trips this thing works and it's actually spring now you wouldn't know it looking outside I still have two plus feet of snow in my front yard um, and this is just starting to get where it's effective enough I'm going to start carrying this again but this has been a great 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 stove super lightweight 56 grams under three minute boil can't say enough good about it so this brings me to my winter stove setup that I've been using all winter long I've used this thing uh, below zero it does work does not work fast this is where your MSR liquid fuel stoves just defeat the crap out of a, a butane whatever canister stove. But one thing, the reason I bought this stove, this is a Covia Spider. It ran me between $50 and $60. It's not titanium, but it's lightweight. There's, there's hardly anything to it. We'll get a weight on it later. But one thing this stove allows me to do by inverting your fuel canister, you get liquid fuel instead of gas, and it makes this stove cook way faster. Granted, you go through way more fuel. But this is a great stove. I can turn the The fuel down on this to where you can also simmer and actually cook food on this it's got a very wide base this has become my new favorite stove I don't know that I'll carry it during the summer just for you know to save how many grams it's gonna save me with this other smaller um, snow peak stove but I love this stove sturdy adjustable this stove is also the reason I bought the titanium windscreen. This thing makes your burn times go so much faster. It keeps the wind off it. And you can use it because your fuel canister isn't having the heat held in on it. And this stove folds up fairly compact. Not near as compact as uh, my other titanium one. But for what you get, this thing is teeny. 
and 170 grams, which is confusing to me, about six ounces for this stove, for an all season stove. Not bad. Okay, getting into canister stoves was something I was not used to. And I prefer to carry the four ounce canisters. Who wants to carry more weight? If you're gonna buy all this titanium stuff, lightweight stove stuff, these little canisters have lasted me for days, days and days, multiple cooks per day, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. If I were going on a three day or longer, I would probably jump to a bigger bottle. But for just an overnighter or a day trip, these things are awesome. They're also expensive, relatively. Buy these off Amazon because they're pressurized fuel. They'll cost you $30 to $60, depending on which size you get. You go into the store to buy them, five bucks. I think this was six or seven dollars, and then they have the even bigger one, which had I known on the next thing I'm gonna show you, I'd have purchased the bigger ones and just kept a couple of these small ones around because I don't do many 10 day trips where it re anymore where it requires the bigger canister. So I purchased this little item that screws on top of one canister and then the other canister on the other side of it. And you can fill the small bottles with the fuel out of the bigger bottles. I have not used this yet. I will try it and let you know how it works. But this just cut the cost of my fuel way down. So, kind of went all over the gamut here. I started out with some really ridiculous stoves, but stoves I have used nonetheless in the backcountry. Down to what some people may consider ridiculous to spend $60 on a little teeny stove and $60 on a little dinky pot. But boy, like I said, titanium must be addictive because once I started, I just couldn't quit buying it. And it has brought my overnight pack weight down for a summer trip to somewhere around nine pounds. And buying a new pack was probably half of that weight. But this stuff, everything adds up and it makes a huge difference. So thanks for coming along with this. Um, I appreciate uh, my subscribers. You guys have turned, my channel started out me showing my son while he was away at college some of the trips I'd been on to other people actually being interested and giving a crap about some dumb kid from Wyoming of all places. Um, I love backpacking. I love the outdoors. And I have a lot of adventures planned for this summer. There'll be a lot of day trips and planning some good long extended trips as well. Appreciate everybody watching. If you haven't subscribed, please consider doing so. I would appreciate it. And please hit the thumbs up button. Thanks for watching.